By learning more about your genome, you've taken a major step preparing yourself for the genome era. So what do the Atlantic megalith builders believe? Well, first of all, most Atlantic megalith builders are Roman Catholic. This is especially seen in Ireland, where there are many pilgrimages to sacred sites dedicated to St. Patrick and other saints. also among the Basques. And in Brittany. In Scotland, the Presbyterian Church is very popular. Another movement that is very popular in Scotland is that of the Freemasons. They even have the Scottish Rite named after them. This movement has also moved the United States. Many historical figures in North America were Freemasons. In 1534, Henry VIII, who was the Tudor king, founded the Anglican Church in England. The Anglican Church is the official religion of England, as well as many of its former colonies. It is also very popular in Cornwall. And in Wales, Queen Elizabeth I energized the Welsh identity movement by mandating that scripture be translated into Welsh. In Scandinavia, the Sami mostly practice Lystadian Lutheranism. It is actually more common in North America among Sami immigrants than it is in Scandinavia. Many Atlantic megalith builders in the United States are Roman Catholic. This community is predominantly Irish, and they are descendants of the Irish immigrants that were displaced by the plantations in the 1600s and the Irish potato famine in the 1800s. What isn't so well known is there was a lot of cultural mixing with the American Jewish immigrants. This resulted in a popular dish, corned beef and cabbage, being served on St. Patrick's Day. It also resulted in some intermarriage. Many American Jews are actually descended from from Irish people who converted to Judaism. Another popular church in the United States is the Presbyterian Church. Many Presbyterians are descended from Scottish and Scots-Irish immigrants that came to the United States. Evangelicals are very popular in the Deep South, and many Evangelicals are of Scots-Irish descent or Scottish descent, or even Welsh or other Atlantic megalith builder immigrants. Many Americans historically belong to the Freemasons, which came from Scotland. As I mentioned in the previous video, Atlantic megalith builder DNA is very ancient. The R1B groups, DF27, 
R21 and L21 go back about 8,000 years. The haplogroups for the mitochondrial DNA go back tens of thousands of years. There have been successive waves of religion going through the Atlantic megalith builder communities. The oldest predate the Celtic invasion that occurred at the beginning of the Iron Age. The very oldest of the Atlantic megalith builder legends are only found among the peoples who do not speak Gaelic. These include the sun goddess, which is found among the Basque and Sami people, a character that can best be compared to the man in the moon. His name is Alargi or Ile in the Basque culture and Mono in the Sami culture. This myth is also found in Brittany, so it is probably a little bit newer. Also, there is the thunder god, Orko or Horigalus, which is kind of comparable to what we know as Thor in the United States. In about 800 BCE, the Celts invaded the British Isles and many of the other Atlantic megalith builder territories. Many of the myths still survive from their past one of the most famous is that of the giants, which were often cannibals. In Ireland, they were called Tiwa Dabdana, or the Dagda, which were the pantheon of giants. In Scotland, it was called the Giantess. In Wales, Bran the Blessed, Cornwall called the Quirinius, the Basque called them the Gentala, and the Sami called them the Stalo. And in Great Britain, they actually are still around as a legend, and they're called Gogmagog, or Sena Abbas, the giant. In the United States, these exist as 19th century folk folk legends. Another variant on the giant legends is that of the Cyclops. This was called Balor in Ireland, Tartalo in the Basque regions, and Bugglenose in Brittany, although Bugglenose was not exactly a Cyclops. A modern day version of this is Euron Crozai Greyjoy in the Game of Thrones series. Another famous Atlantic megalith builder legend is that of the tree gods. These are known as the woodland fairies or the woodmen that dwelt in the thorns in Ireland and they were called the Iggy. The Basque also have a similar legend of the Ata, the Etsai, or the Basahound. The Sami people have a legend about the world tree. In Great Britain, we see a more modern manifestation of this legend in the story about the Ents in Lord of the Rings, Treebeard or Fangorn. In the United States, there's a story about Bran and the Three-Eyed Raven in the Weirwood Trees in A Song of Ice and Fire. Just about every Atlantic megalith elder culture has the story of the evil siren. I will probably butcher these names, but I'm going to give it an attempt. In Ireland, it is known as the Magin Mahara. Scotland calls them Selkies or Orkneys. In the Isle of Man, it was the Moid and Varay. It's known as Morgan in the Wales. In Cornwall, it's called Coric Lucas or the Mermaid of Padstow. The story behind the Mermaid of Padstow is that she taught the starving villagers how to make stargazy pie. The Basque culture has a creature called the Anguma. The Sami have the Chachalmash which are the men of the water. In Brittany, it's known as Morgan Le Fay. In Great Britain, it's Morgan. And the United States knows these as mermaids. These are a little bit more evil kind of mermaids. There is a theory that the Scottish Selkies were actually based on Sami or Finnish women who sailed to their shores in sealskin kayaks. There's another theory that they might have been Inuits. The story of the Midnight Washerwomen is probably the spookiest of any of them. It goes like this. The three old women go to the water's edge at midnight to wash the shrouds for those about to die. Or sometimes they wash the blood-stained clothing of those who are about to die. Some versions of the myth say that you can trick them into granting you three wishes. This is also a very common myth among the Atlantic, along the Atlantic megalith builder. They're just called the Midnight Washerwomen in Ireland and Wales. Cornwall. They're called the Beanie in Scotland, Lavaneras in the Basque culture, and in Brittany they're called Les Lavandiers or Canaras et Nas. I definitely butchered that. They're just called the Three Witches in Great Britain. That story, I can't lie, it really spooked me when I read it. Another spooky story is the Grim Reaper story. In Brittany, this is called the Anku. The Anku is a death omen that collects the souls of the deceased. The Anku is the last person to die in a parish during the year. The last deceased person will assume the duty of the calling for the dead. They describe the Anku as a tall, haggard figure with long white hair. It is also perceived as a skeleton with a revolving head, able to see everything everywhere. The Anku is said to drive a cart and stops at the house of someone who is about to die 
die. It knocks on the door. The sound is sometimes heard by the living or it could give out a mournful wail like the Irish banshee. The Anku has also been reported as an apparition entering the house. It takes away the dead who are then placed in the cart with the help of two ghostly companions. Different cultures have different names for this character. Ireland calls it the Morrigan. Wales calls it Aran. The Basque call it Gweco. It's called Noai, the intercessor with death, or Ruachta in the Sami language, the Anku in Brittany, and it is called the Grim Reaper in the United States and Great Britain. On a lighter note, Mother Nature is one of the deities of the Atlantic megalith builders. In Ireland, her name was Danu or Anu. In Scotland, it was Kaliach. In Wales, Don. The Basque called her Amalur. The Sami people call her Rana Nietzsche. Great Britain calls her the Dumnani. And in the United States, she is known as Mother Nature. One deity that was particularly feared was the Storm God. In Scotland, she was called Beira. The Basque called her Ode or Sugar. The Sami called her Bigomai. And she was called Princess Dahut in Brittany. She brought the storm. A more obscure deity was the Hunting God or the Food God. These were called Wolvers in Scotland and Leobomai in the Sami language. They brought food to people that were starving and would help them with the hunt. You can't really talk about mythology in the Atlantic megalith builder countries without mentioning fairies and sprites. In Ireland, they're called leprechauns. In Scotland, Shanach, the water sprite. A changeling would be a fairy that was switched to birth. They also had brownies. In Cornwall, they had the Tommyknockers. The Basque had the Lamiak, the Mariuk, or Inkshuak. The Sami had Shidis, and in the United States, we know them as leprechauns and fairies. There were also gnomes, and those were the Alshid, the Sidachin, or the Banshee in Scotland. They're called Pixies, or Pobovian in Cornwall, and the Basque called them Eratsuk. They were called the Corrigan in Brittany. We know them as gnomes in the United States. At the beginning of the Iron Age, the Celts invaded the Atlantic megalith builder territories, and left a legacy in the form of the Gaelic language, as well as some mythology. One of the most famous stories is the Wisdom Seeking Youth and the Fish Wizard or the Salmon of Wisdom. This is known as Finn McCool in Ireland and the Isle of Man, Fingal or Finn in Scotland, Merlin in Wales, the story of Arthur and Merlin in Cornwall, and Merlin, Gandalf, or Dumbledore in Great Britain. There are also versions of this story in the United States in the form of Huckleberry Finn and more recently the story of Arya Stark looking for her mother in the Riverlands in A Song of Ice and Fire. Another Celtic story that was incorporated into the Atlantic Megalith Builder mythos is the story of Luke. I probably cannot pronounce these names, but I'll give it a shot. Lianlog in Ireland, Huchan in Scotland, and also the Isle of Man, Luke Lawanach in Wales, Jack the Giant Killer in Cornwall, and even Sir Lancelot in Brittany. Uhulan, Sir Lancelot, and Aragorn are some of his manifestations in Great Britain. And he is known in the United States as Aegon VI Targaryen, otherwise known as Jon Snow, in A Song of Ice and Fire. Finally, there is a story of King Mark, Tristan, and Assault. They pretty much go by these same names in all of the territories. He's King Mark, Tristan, and Assault in Ireland. And in Scotland, it's Arthur Assault and Sir Tristan. Cornwall calls a King Mark of Cornwall, the uncle of Tristan and the husband of Assault. In Brittany, it's Hoel Assault and Tristan. And in Great Britain, it's Arthur Assault and Sir Tristan. This is a very universal story. I've even noticed a parallel with a story in scripture about King Saul, King David, and Princess Mikael. If you like this video, please subscribe and keep checking this channel to learn how to get the most out of your DNA test results. Thank you for watching.